Yes. The Georgia Senate runoffs now just 22 days away in early voting. It began this morning. Our field producer Annie Anderson, she visited a polling place today that was packed with excited voters and also some big names. Early voting kicked off today in Georgia, and if you look behind me, you can see there is still quite a long line. This is actually a short line for this polling precinct. Throughout the day, the line went much longer than it is right now. But people I talked to say despite the long line and cold weather, they are excited to wait in line and to cast their vote. Temperatures in the low 40s Monday morning didn't dampen the party atmosphere at C.T. Martin Rec Center in West Atlanta. I'm dancing because I'm excited and it's to stay warm too. Tracy Bates got to the polling center even before it opened, excited to cast her vote. I did not think that it would be such a contentious race and it matters so much for the entire country what happens here in Georgia today. Bates was joined by some big names in line. Democratic senatorial candidate Reverend Raphael Warnock and former UN Ambassador Andrew Young also voted at the rec center on Monday. It is a very humbling thing for a kid who grew up in public housing to be able to cast a vote for himself to serve in the United States Senate. Only in America is my story even possible. Warnock continued, explaining what he says is really on the ballot. Health care is on the ballot. A livable wage is on the ballot. Criminal justice reform is on the ballot. Voting rights. All of these issues are on the ballot. Bates fully aware of what this election means. So when it all rides on us, I hopefully we'll step to the town challenge and make this country better for everybody. Ambassador Young, who worked with Martin Luther King Jr. and was executive director of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, reflected on the fights he and others waged to get to this point. I was pleased when I rode up here at 8.30 this morning and saw that line. I went out to try to speak to him and I couldn't because I teared all up. I mean, people died for this right. And many of them I knew. And people got beat up. And uh, people lost their homes, lost their jobs. And democracy doesn't come cheap. Have to you have to give some time and sometimes you have to risk your life. If Congressman Lewis was here right now, just how do you think he'd be feeling? Oh. He'd be cheered tearing up like me, but it would be tears of joy. And joy is just what Bates and others felt Monday morning. I'm voting, I'm voting, I'm voting. In Atlanta, Annie Anderson for RNN. All right, Andy, thank you very much. I want to bring Andrew back in. And Andrew, um, you know, that moment um, with Andrew Young, and for people who did know, he was a huge figure, not only in Georgia politics, but in civil rights. Yeah. Um, it's going to come down to turnout. Uh, we, we say that a lot, but really here, uh, Georgia, the third um, largest African-American voting population in the country right now. In many ways, you can say that Biden from the primary process from South Carolina and even in the presidency, that turnout, particularly female African-Americans, you know, made him the nominee for the party and arguably might have even won him the election. Georgia is an example. I think the perfect symbol to counteract is, you know, Loeffler posed over the weekend with a neo-Nazi, a white supremacist who had even marched in Charlottesville. She claimed she didn't know and then distanced herself later on. But it seems that she and also Purdue are doing their damnedest to help, uh, you know, push the vote here as much as Warnock and Ossoff. Well, and it gives you some idea of just how divided the electorate is in Georgia. Look on the numbers, it's 50-50. We just saw that on November 3rd. Uh, and you get these these moments from like Leffler or from David Perdue where they're either backing Trump or they're backing something unsavory or meeting with a Klansman, as the case may be, that sort of reinforce the divided, not just the divided parties 
in Georgia, but the divided population in Georgia. So you're absolutely right. It's going to be a turnout election. We were talking uh, to some people on the ground in Georgia last week who said about half of black women in a poll that were done didn't know the day of the runoff, that it was January 5th. So education, reach out, turnout, it's all going to be at more important in the January 5th runoff than it was up until, you know, in the lead up to November 3rd. That's going to be a tough ask. You have to assume that Georgia Republicans are sort of more primed to go to the polls, are more used to it. And some argue that that might be counterbalanced by the mail-in voting. Um, and already there was more than a million people who requested mail-in ballots in Georgia, overwhelmingly, at least nationally. That trend's Democrat, and they believe it'll be right. the same thing here. Biden's going to Georgia tomorrow here. It, there's no way to exaggerate in terms of Senate runoffs historically the importance of Georgia. 50-48, Republican advantage going in. If Democrats win both seats, they will, in effect, get the gavel back um, and, and be able, I think, more importantly than just the votes, they're going to be able to decide what comes up for a vote. Stimulus, as we talked about uh, early in the program, as an example, would at least be coming up for a vote. And you know Republicans would agree, at least some would, the Democrats about the scope of this package. So you can't overhype just how important 22 days from now it turns out to be. And I'll be fascinated to see what kind of message Biden brings with him to Georgia tomorrow, whether it's sort of the, the what we heard from him throughout the campaign, we want to move the country forward, we want everybody to be involved, sort of, you know, wide nets that we've heard from him, or if it's going to be a little more detailed, hey, you elected me president, if you want my agenda to get through, I need you to come out, otherwise it's going to languish in, in the Senate. So it, it'll be interesting to see how effective the, the, that argument is and what kind of argument that Biden uses. And to that point, we spoke about this last week, uh, Biden, there was an audio recording of him saying, listen, you know, we got to come out maybe even before the 5th and say we are not for defunding the police. Now, that phrase means different things to different people. I'm sure some people actually believe in that, but other people say, no, no, we're for reapportioning the funding or something. That's a more nuanced message. Where does Biden go with that? particularly to a population um, that feels that there's been abuse at the hands of law enforcement, but at the same end, not taking away law enforcement. I I'm curious where Biden's going to go on that message, and I think we're going to hear that tomorrow. When we come back, though, it was a huge day as it deals with the pandemic uh, that has gripped this nation here for the better part of a year. We're going to have more on the COVID outbreak, including the vaccine. And despite the breakthroughs, we still face huge challenges trying to get enough shots into people's arms and willingness of the people to get those vaccines to kill off this virus once and for all.